بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفضية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحلل والحرام ما حرمت والدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال جل وعلا بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خذ من أموالهم صدقة تطهرهم وتزكيهم بها وصل عليهم إن صلاتك سكن لهم والله سميع عليم وقال جل وعلا والذين يكنزون الذهب والفضة ولا ينفقونها في سبيل الله فبشرهم بعذاب أليم يوم يحمى عليها في نار جهنم فتكوى بها جباههم وجنوبهم مظهورهم هذا ما كنستم لأنفسكم فذوقوا ما كنتم تكنزون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful I beg of his mercy I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this day of Jum'ah and I ask Allah azza wa jal to send salutations upon Prophet Muhammad his companion his family members and those who follow their footsteps until the day of resurrection. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. As we come to the third Jum'ah of this blessed month of Ramadan, and the second ten days are approaching to its end, which are the 10 days of maghfirah, asking and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from tomorrow night, which will be the 21st night of the month of Ramadan, will start the last 10 days of this blessed month of Ramadan. <coughs> Number one blessing that Allah gives in this last 10 days, that the amount of people that were being freed from the fire of hell, for the first 20 days, each day the number increases in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. So this is why the last 10 days have been mentioned or have been categorized in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَآخِرُهُ وَعِذْقٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ The last 10 days of the month of Ramadan are the means of salvation from the fire of hell, protection from Jahannam. That's the first immediate effect, reward Allah gives to the believer as the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan starts. The second action which happens in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, that is called i'tikaf. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the second hijrah, where the month of Ramadan became the fasting of the month of Ramadan became obligatory until his demise. He did atikaf for every single year. This was the consistent amal of the Prophet ﷺ. Now the atikaf are two types. Number one is the atikaf which is considered to be optional, which has no limit, which has no timing, but has to be in the masjid. You can't go to a place and do atikaf there. Atikaf has to be in the masjid to get the reward of atikaf. If some people get together at a location and they decide to do atikaf, it will not be considered as atikaf. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, atikaf should be done. Wa antum akifuna fil masajid. The qad, the condition, has been put forward. For the atikaf to be rewarded as atikaf, it has to be in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a masjid. 
And Allah mentions that in the Quran, وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ That you, while you are doing i'tikaf in the masjid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a lot of people, they, you know, some people they get groups in the house, small, you know, let's do i'tikaf at my house. There is no i'tikaf at the house. There is sleepovers at the house, not i'tikaf. I'tikaf happens in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the second action which happens in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. And that is that a person, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, throughout his life, in the month of Ramadan, especially the last 10 days, he did i'tikaf for all the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the person who does i'tikaf for one day, أَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنَ النَّارِ ثَلَاثَ خَنَادِقَ Allah takes him away three trenches from the fire of Jahannam, of which each trench, the length or the width of it is between the heavens and earth. So this is why I'm giving you connection that Number one, the last 10 days have been made the days of deliverance from fire of hell. So immediately, to get that into your life, the action of atikaf has been put forward through which a believer can get deliverance from fire of Jahannam. So this is why atikaf has been made prescribed for, for believers to do. So the... I mentioned that there are two types of atikaf. There is one type of atikaf that can be done anytime. And that is, as soon as you enter the door of the masjid, while you're coming for Jum'ah, you're coming for Taraweeh, you're coming for Salatul Maghrib, Salatul Asr, Salatul Dhuhr, as soon as you enter, you make intention, Nawaitul atikaf ma dumtu fi hadhal masjid. I am making intention of atikaf as long as I am in this house of Allah, I am in this masjid. So no matter what you're doing in the masjid, recitation of Quran, praying, waiting for salat to start, while you are doing all of this, you are receiving reward for atikaf. You are receiving reward for atikaf. And what's the reward of atikaf? Deliverance from fire of hell. So the moments that you are spending in the house of Allah with the intention of atikaf, Allah is giving you that reward that Allah is protecting you from fire of hell. And then, the next type of atikaf is the atikaf that happens through the last 10 nights, which starts on the 21st night and ends the night, before, uh, the night of Eid. So that's the night you go home. And this atikaf is for the whole 10 days. Those who make that intention of atikaf, they stay in the masjid, they do ibadah, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And along with that, they are allowed to do certain actions of outside as long as they do not violate the rules and regulations and they go into more details. So now, these are the two types of atikafs that takes place. Either you can do a day atikaf, you can do a night atikaf, you can do a whole 10 days atikaf. According to your convenience, the more you do, the better reward Allah Azza wa Jal will give you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect for, for those people who do atikaf from the fire of hell. Now, the third action which comes into the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan is Taharru Laylatul Qadr is to seek the night of power. It's not confirmed that it's 27th. So you mark your calendar, I come 27th, and then that's it, my little qadr is done. No. The hadith narrows it down by different. The first hadith says it's in the last 10 days. And then the second hadith says, تَحَرُّوا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ مِنْ وِتْرِ اللَّيَالِ فِي عَشْرِ فِي فِي آخِرِ عَشْرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ that look for the night of power in the odd nights of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. So all the narrations that talk about Laylatul Qadr, it narrows us down into the last 10 uh, odd nights of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. So at least, and then there is no more narrowing. 
That's the narrowest it can get. From all the ahadith of Laylatul Qadr, that's the most narrowest it can get. The last, the odd nights of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Yes, different sahaba gave their expressions in regards to them feeling it Laylatul Qadr on certain nights. And many of those experiences of those companions of the Prophet Sallallahu happen to be on, those 20, on the 27th night. But there is not a single statement in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which confirms it to be on the 27th night. This is why we should not just make that as a focus, but rather throughout the last 10 nights, the odd numbers of the last 10 nights, we should try to do worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seeking for the night of power, which is Laylatul Qadr. What's the benefit of Laylatul Qadr? Remember, our focus started. Our focus started from where? Deliverance from fire of hell. Correct? This is the last 10 days. I want you to keep that focus because we're going to go more into that. The deliverance from the fire of hell is the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. In lieu of that, the action of Atikaf came in. In lieu of that, Taharru Laylatul Qadr, seeking the night of power, came in. What did Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? That on the, on the night of power, Nazala Jibra'il bi kabkabatim min al malaika. Jibra'il descends on the night of power. And any believer that is standing in prayer or he is remembering or she is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jibra'il gives them that glad tiding that Allah, had, Allah has freed you from the fire of hell. Allah has given you deliverance from the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your reward. The mercy of Allah is descending upon you. So again, the night of power is also to save yourself from the fire of Jahannam and may Allah protect each and every single one of us. There is an amal in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is the most effective when it comes to the matter of asking Allah to protect you from the fire of hell. And that amal, that action can be understood by a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which he narrates it from Allah, meaning it's Hadith Qudsi, the, the statements of Allah, the wording of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when He created Jannah, paradise, shaqqa fiha anharaha, it, He made its rivers to flow. Wadalla fiha athmaraha, it, Allah Azza wa Jal made the fruits of Jannah to hang. And then he describes in many of the things that Jannah has. And after he beautifies, Allah beautifies the paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Jannah, Takallimi, speak to me. And remember, for an object to speak, for an object to speak, for our understanding is difficult. How can an object speak? Allah mentions of the, on the Day of Judgment that those people who did wrong actions, and may Allah save and protect each and every single one of us. Allah says on the Day of Judgment, those people who did wrong action and they will be in a denial position that, Oh Allah, I never did it. Where did you get it from in my book? You did haram, you disobeyed Allah, you did wrong things on the day of judgment, Allah will confront you, Allah says, you know, you did this action in this world. This person will say, no, 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 this is someone else's book. Maybe, you know, the angels, while they were downloading the, the, the actions, he made a mistake or something. Or when they were, you know, they were capturing the files, they put someone else's name instead of my name. So Allah says, الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ Today we will seal their mouth. وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ Their hands will speak to us. وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And their feet will give testimony on the wrong actions that these people did. So Sahaba said, O Prophet of Allah, how can a hand and the feet of a person have the ability to speak? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who has made your tongue, the, has given your tongue the ability to speak, he will give your feet and hands the ability to speak. 
the one who gave your tongue the ability to speak, he will give your hands and feet the ability to speak. So the objects that have been given the ability to speak in many places Allah mentions in the ahadith have been mentioned. This is the divine special blessing moment Allah gives to that thing. So Allah decorates the Jannah. Allah decorates the Jannah and tells Jannah, Takallimi, speak to me, O paradise. So the Jannah says, Qad aflahal mu'minun. Indeed, the believers have become successful. The Jannah itself is proud of his, of his beauty. The paradise itself is proud of his beauty. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I take swear by my honor and my greatness. That everyone will go into you except the person who is miser. Except the person who is stingy with his wealth, who is bakhil. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-sakhiyu qareebun min Allah, wa qareebun min al-jannah, wa qareebun min al-malaika, wa qareebun min al-mu'mineen. A generous person, he is close to Allah. He is close to the angels, he is close to Jannah, and he is in the hearts of the believers. وَالْبَخِيلُ بَعِيدٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَبَعِيدٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ وَبَعِيدٌ مِّنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَبَعِيدٌ مِّنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And a miser individual, he is far from Allah, he is far from Jannah, he is far from the angels, and he is far away from the hearts of the believers. Remember, we started the focus on the last 10 days, which is deliverance from the fire of hell. And keep on, I'm keep, I keep repeating the main point because, you know, we happen to lose track of it. You know, from the time where I started school, they used to tell me that an IQ of an individual can only focus on 45 minutes to a subject. And now my children go to school and they tell me an IQ of an individual can only focus 7 minutes on a subject. When I started the school, it was 45 minutes. But now it's dropped down to 7 minutes. And I don't know, God knows, Allah knows when my grandchildren will go to school, <laughs> how many minutes the IQ of the focus of a person might be. So that's why I want to keep focus of this because this is a very sensitive matter. This is a very important action because as we are going through the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan and we have only this Friday and then the next Friday and then Eid comes in and the devil is come out now at that time no matter what type of force you do to make yourself do a good deed is difficult it's not impossible it's difficult well in the month of Ramadan it's much easier so let's keep that focus in hand and just try that, you know, take out from that seven minutes and extend it to a for another 25 minutes or 30 minutes so we can uh, understand and, and take it from this, inshallah. So I started my talk with the last 10 days are the 10 days of deliverance from the fire of hell. We mention in lieu of that, atikaf. We mention in lieu of that, looking for the night of power. And now we are mentioning an action, a deed that is the most effective when it comes to the matter of a person being protected from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is called charity. Charity. Charity is an action which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such a way that no matter what type of punishment is going to come your way, Allah's Rasul said, the person who gives charity in a day, no harm will come on him in his way on that day. <laughs> Under this narration in Kanzul Ummal with the authority of Ibn Asakir, there is a story mentioned and it's a very nice story that I would like to share with you. There was this person who had a habit of hatching the eggs of the birds and destroying them before they can be they can be born. So whenever he ha he would be in this in this uh, 
zeal that every time when a bird is giving a, is, gives an egg, he will go and grab it and destroy it in front of the mother. So this bird complained to Allah that, Oh Allah, this person is a zalim. He takes my children away from me. So Allah Azza wa Jal said to the bird, In Ada fa'ahlikuhu. If he comes back, I will destroy him. Few days later, the bird gives, lays an egg, and this person, fa'ata bi sullamihi, he comes with his ladder, he goes up to the tree, and he grabs the eggs, and he leaves. And the bird is standing there for his call, for its call to be answered by Allah. So the bird addresses Allah that, Oh Allah, you told me that when he will come back to do this evil act, you will destroy. Allah Azza wa Jal says to the bird, Yes, I did say that if he would come back, I will destroy him. But before him coming to this action, on his way for this evil intention, there was a beggar that came on his way and asked him for some food, for some assistant. And he opened his bag and whatever he had, he emptied out in front of that beggar. And I have made this oath on myself. I will not diminish, I will not destroy a person who starts his day with the charity. Maybe he's an evil individual, but his charity has protected him. And he will be punished on his evil action. This doesn't mean that today we give charity and tomorrow we go and eat the money of someone else. No. Because many of times when we hear a glad tidings, shaitan plays with our mind and shaitan tells us, you know, I'll just give charity and I will cheat on him. No. That's not the case. Because if you cheat on him, indeed Allah will take away the reward of your charity. It, giving, it gives you the ability to spend more for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are 10 benefits that Allah has promised for every individual who gives charity. Remember, charities are two types. One is the optional charity which is known as sadaqat. And the second is zakah, which is also a charity, but that's a mandatory charity. That's the sadaqatul farida. These are the obligatory charity. And there are different rewards for both of them. Zakah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hassinu amwalakum bi zakah. Protect your wealth by giving zakah. And this has been a numerous and many experiences that have been shared by many people in the past that those who give zakah Allah protects their wealth their wealth does not go to waste you know today something gets stolen from you just look back and maybe that zakah you did not pay can become the means nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one penny one penny that was supposed to go in zakah but it did not go and stayed with your wealth that one penny has the ability to destroy your whole bank balance. These are the statements of Rasul ﷺ. One penny that was supposed to go in zakah, but did not go and stayed with you. That one penny has the ability to destroy all of your bank balance. So this is why when it comes to the matter of zakah, according to calculation, if it comes out a certain amount, give always more to protect yourself. So that's the first aspect of zakah, the charity, which is zakah, obligatory charity. The second is, فَإِنَّ فِي الْمَالِ حَقٌّ سِوَى الزَّكَاهِ The Prophet ﷺ said, your wealth has a right other than zakah also. The person says, you know, I give my zakah so I don't have to give any other charity. No. Because giving charity itself is something which is great. Zakah has its own benefit, but protection from the fire of hell is given by sadaqah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna sadaqata tudfi'u sahibuha min al-bala. Charity stops a calamity coming your way. A person earns $10,000 in a month, and as the month finishes, he receives his paycheck, 
He comes to the masjid, he drops a thousand in the box. He goes home with nine thousand only. In his eye, he is only bringing nine thousand to the house. But there are million calamities that Allah will save this individual from by giving that thousand in charity. Otherwise, if that charity is not given, and Allah protect everyone's wealth and their health. You go home and there is a calamity, there is an illness, there is a situation that comes into the family, and millions have spent just to provide a cure for them. Just to provide. This is why, what did the Prophet ﷺ said? If you have someone who is ill in your house, Dawu مَرْضَاكُمْ بِالصَّدَقَةِ If you have someone that is ill in your house, treat him with charity. That doesn't mean that you don't buy medicine for him. That doesn't mean that you don't get medicine for him. You do get medicine for him. But have the belief that when I give charity, Allah will remove all the illnesses. Allah will remove all the illnesses. Allah will protect from all the harm that is coming my way. And number three, what is it? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who gives charity, Allah saves him from a sudden death. Allah saves him from a sudden death and a bad death and an accidental death. Allah gives him death in a peaceful manner. And that is something we all will have to face one day. But charity is the means will give you that peace of, that peace of mind when you leave from this world. So I was mentioning charity is the amal that saves you from the fire of hell and that saves you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Often we have heard the story about an individual during the time of Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam by the name of Samiri. Samiri was a person who deviated Bani Israel when Musa alayhi salatu was salam went for 40 days in the mountain of Tul. So when Musa alayhi salam came back, cutting the whole story short because I want to focus on the main point. When Musa alayhi salatu was salam came back, he found out that Samiri was the person who started all this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Musa that everyone who was involved in the ibadah, worship of the cows, should be killed. That's the way they will get their sin removed. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told that Samiri should not be killed. He should be left alone. People will isolate him, don't talk to him, don't get near him, and maybe he will just walk around seeking for assistance, but he won't be killed. Alama Alusi in Tafsir Ruhul Ma'ani writes on the authority of Tafsir Bahrul Muhid. I'm giving you the reference, so next time, you know, if someone has an issue with this statement, they can check it up. So Tafsir Ruhul Ma'ani in the, in, the, in the tenth volume under the authority of Bahrul Muhid, Alama Alusi mentions. That the reason why this individual was left alone, Allah said to Musa that, Oh Musa, this person spends in the path of Allah very much, so don't kill him. He has been saved from the punishment of Allah. Why? Because of the charity he has given. So in the last 10 days, deliverance from the fire of hell, the ultimate way to receive that deliverance from the fire of hell the more you give, Allah will give you more. The more we'll give, Allah will give you more. Allah's Rasul said, this narration is in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet said that every morning, there are two angels that descend from the sky. One on the right and one on the left. And the whole day, they make this announcement. And they make this dua to Allah. That, O oh Allah, who is giving his wealth for your sake, you increase it. Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. And the other one says, O oh Allah, the one who does not give in your path, you destroy his wealth. Remember, the greatest obstacle for a person's prayer to be accepted are his sins. Why your dua is not accepted? Because you got too many sins. Previous khutbah that one of the conditions of dua being accepted is to clean your hard drive and then download. So it's a better better speed, right? 
clean your hard drive and then download, it gives you a better speed. So remove your sins and ask from Allah and you'll see your end, your dua being accepted. But angels are those makhluk of Allah, they don't commit sin. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون They don't commit sin, so they got no obstacles. Their dua is, is immediately getting accepted. And who are they making dua for? Allahumma a'ti munfiqan kharafa. Oh Allah, the one who gives you, give him more. And oh Allah, the one who stops giving, you destroy his wealth. So, and there are many benefits. Books of ahadith have been filled with when it comes to the matter of giving for the sake of Allah. And remember, when you give in the month of Ramadan, it multiplies by 700. And then after that, that 700, it's multiplied by 70. Because in normal days, سَبْعِ مِئَةِ ضِعْفٍ Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَمْبَةٍ عَبَّدَ السَّبْعَ سَنَابِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِحْ عَلِيهِ Those who give in the path of Allah, Allah makes that one grain, one dollar, one, one um, you know, the amount that you spend, Allah multiplies by 700, correct? So one dollar gives you 700 back. In the month of Ramadan, that 700 gets multiplied by 70. That 700, you do the math because I don't have, you know, a great uh, accountant, you know, degree. Maybe, you know, someone who has that degree, Dr. Mutawalli, he can take care of that calculation. I'm not going to do that. But that 700 multiplies by 70. And imagine Allah says, Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. Allah increase it more for whoever Allah wishes. This is the treasures of Allah. The more you take, the wealthier you become. The more you take from the treasures of Allah, the wealthier you become. May Allah give us the understanding. May Allah make us among those who is spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وَصَلِّ عَلَىٰ جَمِيعِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْمُصَّلِينَ وَالصَّحَابَةِ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful salutations upon Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, his family members, and those who follow the footsteps until the day of resurrection. Respected brothers and sisters, as we shared many ways to save ourselves from the fire of Jahannam, from the fire of hell, deliverance from the fire of hell in these last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, which will be starting from tomorrow night. One of the greatest ways is to have and spend for the good causes, for the causes that brings benefit in your life, for the causes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to share a few couplets of Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu which he addressed Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu and he said the benefit of a person who how he how he expresses the bounty of wealth that Allah has given he says ya ya, ya Jabir oh Jabir ma ahsan ad-dunya wa iqbaluha idha ata'a Allah man nalaha but oh al Jabir how beautiful is the wealth of this world and it's continuously increasing when a person knows how to do and how to give thanks to Allah about the wealth that Allah has given. The person who doesn't spend in the path of Allah from the wealth that Allah has given for the good causes, indeed he had showed his appreciation with disobedience to Allah for the wealth that Allah has given. He has welcomed his wealth with doing what? Not showing his appreciation, not showing his gratitude. 
وحذر ذوال الفضل يا جابر او جابر if a person doesn't spend in the path of Allah what happens to his wealth فحذر ذوال الفضل this fadl of Allah this is a blessing of Allah be fearful that it will go away wa'ti min dunyaka man sa'alaha and give from the dunya the wealth Allah has given you to those who are in need and to the institutions that are in need. فَإِنَّ ذَا الْعَرْشِ جَذِيلَ الْعَطَاهِ يُضَعَّفُ بِالْحَبَّةِ أَمْثَالَهَا Because the one who is sitting up there, he gives so much that in one that you spend, he will multiply it by many and he will return it back to you. وَكَمْ رَأَيْنَا مِنْ ذَوِي ثَرْوَةِ We've seen many people who had a lot of wealth in this world. لَمْ يَقْبُلُوا بِالشُّكْرِ إِقْبَالَهَا They did not be thankful on the wealth that Allah has given. تَاهُوا عَلَى الدُّنْيَا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَقَيَّدُوا بِالْقُفْلِ أَقْبَالَهَا They became one of those people who locked their wealth up and did not spend in the path of Allah. What happened to those people's wealth? Allah destroyed it from the beginning to the end. So, O oh, Ajabir, when Allah, whenever Allah gives you the opportunity to give, don't ever hesitate. Because the one who knows how to give, he knows how to take away also. The one who knows how to give, the one who gives, he can take away also. But when you will give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you in your wealth and Allah will remove many harms that will come from for you. And Allah Azza wa Jal will give barakah to your wealth. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma as'anaka minhu abduka wa nabiyyuk Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ibadaka salihun. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri masna'adaka minhu abduka wa nabiyyuk Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ibadaka salihun. Wa anta al-musta'an wa alayka al-balaag. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-aliyy al-azim. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina wa ja'alna sababan liman ihtada. Allahumma a'tiq riqabana min al-nar. اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وعز وأجل وهم أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة